We're about to explore extraordinary archaeological discoveries that transcend time and ignite our imagination. From ancient artifacts to hidden civilizations, these remarkable finds unravel the secrets of our past and leave us in awe. Join us on the journey as we showcase the most incredible archaeological revelations that continue to fascinate and inspire everyone who sees them. Lock rings are unique artifacts from the late Bronze Age that hold a special place in the realm of decorative jewelry. These penannular hair ornaments are distinguished by their intricate craftsmanship and are predominantly crafted from gold, showcasing the skill and artistry of ancient metalworkers. The name lock ring derives from its suggested function as a hair fastener, adding a touch of elegance and adornment to the wearer. Originating in Ireland during the mid-8th century BCE, lock rings continue to be produced in the River Shannon area until the 7th century BCE. Their popularity extended beyond Ireland, as similar specimens have been unearthed in Great Britain and France, shedding light on the interconnected nature of Bronze Age cultures. Typically, lock rings feature a hollow, penannular shape with a central opening constructed from various components like split metal tubes, face plates, and binding strips. These artifacts come in a range of designs from plain face plates to those adorned with concentric lines, hatching, or triangular patterns. The exquisite craftsmanship displayed in their creation is a testament to the skilled workmanship of ancient goldsmiths. Near Fackenham Plaque is an intriguing archaeological discovery from Norfolk, England. Made of lead and weighing around 8 grams, the plaque features a unique Old English runic inscription that sparked considerable interest and in interpretation. It was discovered in 2015 during a metal detecting activity near a church in western Norfolk, but the precise location remains undisclosed. While the plaque itself cannot be directly dated, it's generally attributed to the period between the later 8th century and 11th century based on similar findings in the vicinity. The inscription carved in Anglo-Saxon runes along the sides reads Deadestwerg, translating to Dead is Dwarf. The lead plaque measures approximately an inch in its longest dimension and bears a carving resembling a human-like mask with pointed eyes. Scholars widely believe that the plaque played a role in healing rituals, where the inscription's display and recitation resulted in the demise of a dwarf associated with the illness or its cause. This interpretation aligns with a broader Germanic tradition linking dwarfs to sickness, as seen in other artifacts and charms from the North Sea region. The Setter Comb, discovered in 1932 at Setter in Bomlo, Norway, is an ancient bone comb dating back to the years 560 to 700. Noted for its runic inscription, the comb has sparked extensive discussions and interpretations among scholars. Cataloged as NKJ40 in the Rundata catalog, the comb was found during archaeological investigations of a refuse heap on the beach at the base of a cliff in Setter Fjord in Bomlo Island. Currently housed in the collection of the Bergen Museum, its dating has been a subject of debate. Hakong Schedelig and Berger Nerman initially dated it to the second half of the 7th century based on its deposition strata, while Egil Baca proposed a typological dating suggesting it could be as early as 575 or possibly as late as the 8th century. The comb's runic inscription consists of Elder Futhark and Younger Futhark runes arranged in three rows of text. The direction of reading and the meaning of the inscription remain uncertain. The inscription translates to Leaning Maiden May Repose, Attain Everything, Be Pleased with Everything, although this interpretation disregards the significance of the charm word Alu. Various other interpretations have been proposed, but consensus has yet to be reached among scholars. Deep under the South China Sea, two shipwrecks from the Ming Dynasty have been discovered. One of the wrecks, known simply as Ship One, is filled with thousands of perfectly preserved porcelain artifacts intended for export trade. The porcelain is stacked and nested in vessels covering an area of 30,000 square feet, Archaeologists estimate that there are over 100,000 individual pieces dating to the Zatoku era of the 16th century. 
The second shipwreck, Ship 2, was carrying uniform-sized wood logs, likely intended for shipbuilding. This is the first time that both an export cargo and an import cargo have been found in the same area, highlighting the extensive maritime trade routes along the Maritime Silk Road. The challenging task of underwater archaeology in deep waters led to the launch of a new investigation by the Cultural Heritage Administration of Hainan Province. Using a manned submersible and a new surveying and mapping base point, researchers aim to map the shipwrecks in detail. Advanced technological approaches, including bionic-inspired soft robotics and material science, will be employed to salvage relics from the wrecks. The investigation will span approximately a year, involving surveying, evaluating preservation conditions, and determining measures for long-term protection of the wrecks. Ancient Roman busts dating back 1,700 years were discovered near the city of Beit Sheon in Israel in 2019. A local resident spotted the top of one bust protruding from the ground while walking with her husband and immediately reported it to the Israel Antiquities Authority Theft Prevention Unit. Inspectors were dispatched to the site and uncovered not only the first bust, but also another one nearby. These limestone busts, believed to be from the late Roman period which spans the 3rd and 4th centuries, exhibit unique facial features, unusual clothing details, and hairstyles. Typically placed near or in burial caves, these busts are highly likely to have been intended to represent the likeness of the deceased. Similar busts have been found in the Beit Sheon area and northern Jordan, with each one being distinct, highlighting the diversity of artistic styles during that time. The heavy rain that had swept through the area at the time is thought to have exposed the ancient figurines, which local experts say emphasizes the importance of reporting such discoveries to the Israel Antiquities Authority for further study and preservation. The Dura Europos route map, also known as the Stages map, is a fragment of a map from late antiquity discovered in Dura Europos, Syria in 1923. It was drawn on the leather covering of a shield by a Roman soldier of the Cohors XX Palmi Renorum between 230 and 235, making it the oldest preserved map of a part of Europe in its original form. The map, which is the only preserved road map from antiquity in its original state, is currently housed in the manuscript collection at the Bibliothèque Nationale de France in Paris. The map fragment was found during excavations in Dura Europas by archaeologist Franz Cumont. Cumont identified it as a soldier's creation, likely an infantryman or archer of the Cohors XX Palmi Renorum, stationed in Dura. The soldier depicted the travel stages of his unit during their march through the Crimean region. The preserved fragment of the map shows a coastline dividing the depiction into two parts. The open sea is represented on the left side in blue, while the land is shown on the right side in reddish color. Twelve places in the Black Sea region are named, with distances noted in Roman miles. It's enormously helpful for archaeologists and historians when artifacts are found with a date attached to them. Take the Gysi shield, for example. It's a piece of Renaissance parade armor, and we can say with certainty that it was made by the famed Italian goldsmith Giorgio Gysi. He both signed and dated his work in 1554. The elaborate shield is made from a single plate of hammered steel, but its various decorations are made of gold and partially plated with silver. Although Gysi was Italian, he spent five years living in the Netherlands and made the shield during that era, probably in Antwerp. It's one of only two Damascene metalwork pieces made by Gysi known to have survived to the present day. A shield so valuable would never have been used in battle, so it's likely that someone commissioned Gysi to make the object with the intention of placing it on display. We don't know who that person was or where it was displayed, but we do know that it was sold in Paris in 1863 and then again in the same city seven years later, this time by Baron Anselm von Rothschild. His son, Baron Ferdinand de Rothschild, left it to the British Museum as part of the Wadensdon bequest upon his death in 1898. The Rothes Glockenspiel, located in Munich's new town hall in Germany, is a mechanical clock that showcases daily jousts and dancing barrel makers. 
Standing at 260 feet tall, the clock comes to life with the movement of 43 bells and 32 life-size figures, reenacting two scenes from Munich's history. The upper part of the clock depicts the extravagant wedding of Bavarian Duke Wilhelm V in 1568, mechanical jousters representing Bavarian triumph over Knights of Lothengren, symbolizing the grandeur of the event that lasted two weeks and was attended by thousands of revelers. Duke Wilhelm, famous for founding the Hofbrauhaus Brewery, was known for his militant Catholic leadership and anti-Protestant policies. On the lower portion of the glockenspiel, barrel makers engage in the Schlafenstanz or Cooper's Dance. According to tradition, this dance played a role in luring frightened residents back to the streets after a plague in 1517. The Schafflerstanz is still performed every seven years during the Fasching Festival. The glockenspiel was added to the new town hall in 1908 and survived World War II without major damage. A renovation in 2007 corrected the tuning of the carillon. Gakuten Soku, Japan's first true automation, made its debut in Osaka around 1929 as a remarkable mechanical creation. Designed by biologist Makoto Nishimura, this almost 8-foot-tall robot used an air pressure mechanism to perform a variety of actions. It would begin by touching a mace to its head and then proceed to write Chinese characters with its pen. Gaku Tensoku could express pensive eye movements, smiles, cheek puffing, and controlled motions of its head, arms, and torso. Originally built to commemorate the ascension of the Showa Emperor, Gaku Tensoku entertained audiences throughout Japan with its towering golden appearance and serene mechanical performances. However, during a tour in Germany in the 1930s, the humanoid automation went missing. Despite extensive searches and the promise of reward money, it was never seen again. Fortunately, in 2008, the Osaka Science Museum unveiled a new and improved version of the Gakuten Soko. Standing at an impressive 10 feet and 6 inches tall, the updated automation boasts a sleek golden exterior and faithfully replicates all of the original movements. The new Gakuten Soku features an advanced computer-controlled pneumatic system breathing new life into this historical treasure. There's no mysterious grand purpose to this next entry. It's just a particularly beautiful old automation of the kind nobody seems to make anymore. In this case, it depicts an elephant, and it's decked out in gold. This is the sort of thing that would make an ideal gift for a wealthy person, and it almost certainly did. The present owner of the piece is Waddiston Manor, but they possess a detailed history of their unusual artifact. It was built to specification in London in 1768 by Hubert Martinet, who had a team of French craftsmen at his disposal. The bronze casting and the beautiful jewels which decorate the piece were all included there at the request of the purchaser. Many automations such as this, and elephants in particular, were sent to Indians to help smooth over trade relationships. Negotiations between the French East India Company and the English East India Company were complicated. An incredibly beautiful elephant automation was apparently just the thing to get everyone around the table to negotiate. We're moving on to the topic of the mysterious Etruscans with this battered, fragmented artifact. It's the Tabula Cordonensis, a 2,200-year-old inscribed bronze tablet that was found in Cortona, Italy in October 1992. The tablet is broken into seven pieces, with an eighth piece missing. The circumstances of its 1992 discovery are debated. A member of the public handed it to the police, claiming they'd found it at a construction site. The construction site was thoroughly searched, but no other ancient Etruscan artifacts were located. Archaeologists were so suspicious of the tablet's origins that it wasn't confirmed as genuine or made public until 1999. This is the third longest Etruscan language inscription ever found, and might be a record of a legal transaction concerning either the sale or inheritance of real estate. The few scraps of Etruscan we're able to translate confirm that a vineyard, some cultivated land, and Lake Trasimeno are all mentioned in the text. There also appear to be several references to table furnishings, although it's impossible to make sense of these without context. We're tantalizingly close to being able to comprehend these words, 
but we're not quite there yet. Here's a piggy mystery for you. It's a clay pig figurine discovered in August 2020 at Lianhe Ruins in China's Sichuan province. You may have seen something similar to it if you or your kids play games on their mobile phones or tablets. It resembles the piglets from the Angry Birds video game. Of course, given this pig figurine is almost 3,000 years old, it's impossible to connect the two. It looks to be smiling, which is uncommon considering that most figurines carved during the period were either 3D and lifelike or represented their characters from the side rather than from the front. While carvings of pigs may look to us today as something a child might do for a school art project, they were quite popular in China all through the Shang and Zhao dynasties, which started 3,600 years ago and lasted 1,400 years. Pigs were maintained as domestic animals in ancient China, and the ancient Chinese had a propensity to make art based on what they saw. That likely explains why the pig was made, but not why it was made in this style. Maybe it's the work of a child after all. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, and you'll be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching.